So the picture opens with a very dignified old gentleman recounting the events of the world, the world as it used to be, two mighty warrior tribes going to war over stock footage of real world events. This is basically as much backstory as you ever get in the Mad Max movies. So I get, I don't know if he's saying this is the, literally the Cold War leading to nuclear exchanges between America and Russia or if this is something else. And I cannot tell if this is supposed to be stuff that happened between Mad Max 1 and Mad Max 2 or if this stuff already happened and led to the events of okay. Mad Max 1. So they don't have any explanation like this in the first one. Right. Okay. You're just and like, in it. I think you maybe could say like the world of Mad Max 1 still exists, but this movie takes place in the wasteland. And you could go back to society if you wanted to. But over here, this is how things work over here. Who would choose to go over there then? I don't know. That's all the guzzling or just it's the. Yeah, that's what I. Yeah, I don't. I Is the whole world like this? Is this just where they find themselves? But I guess it doesn't matter, right? I mean, we can't choose where we're born. Yeah. And But I again, I love that that is not. You can. Yeah. There are a billion YouTube videos that are like the Mad Max timeline explained. And like, I don't want it. I don't want to <laughs> know that. I don't want to know. Uh, society went backwards. And like in the history of the real world that we live in, that's happened many times. But it didn't just go backwards. It went backwards with technology. Like it went backwards and it was more dangerous than what it was before because now we have dangerous things but, and uh, no rule of law. But precedent in, in our own history, like after the Roman Empire collapsed, like there's stories of people like in the Middle Ages seeing the Roman aqueducts and they're like, what giants built those? Or mm. like what mythological figures built that like couldn't comprehend mm -hmm. but this is a thing that happens there were dark ages uh, uh ancient greece was interrupted by what they call the dark ages and then there was a later dark ages was it a plague so that one they actually don't know what caused oh. someone uh, didn't pay the light bill but these things happen so um yeah this is the most connection we have to a backstory and to the first movie because they show some footage from the first movie they do. But, you're not uh, going to show me footage from the first movie no thank god I don't want to see what the little boy looks like. No, Max at this point, he's just, he's an elemental force. He's a folk figure. And he's just. When you think of it that, yeah, I'm sorry. But yeah, but when you think of it as this is someone telling a tale of him, which I did not totally grasp with the opening dialogue, but obviously understood it at the end. But that makes all of the more, the bigger stuff more. Not that I didn't believe it, but you know. It makes it more fun somehow that this is just someone telling you what it's like. And then he shot a man in the arm and that man was mad because of his gay lover. And then he looked at him mean and then he came back. Max lives on the road in his V8 Interceptor, the same car from the first movie. But this time he has a dog named Dog. And as we watched, you said, well, wait, what do they do about gas? Little did you know, that's what the whole movie's about. <laughs> I should have known. Because the old, isn't the whole other movie just about fucking water? Yeah, yeah. And gas. Gas, I mean, those see. are the things you need. Yep. Uh, Max is being pursued by Wes, accompanied by this character named the Golden Child on his motorcycle. They're obviously <laughs> in a gay relationship. One of Wes's friends accidentally shoots him with a dart. Um, it's a little tiny bow and arrow. It's not a fucking dart. That's a dart, though. No, because, I mean, they even have a bow that they cock back and shoot. It's a bow and arrow. Fine. 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 Uh, Max dart. warns them off with his gun. They leave him alone because he's stopped at this uh this this wrecked 18 wheeler truck why do they call 18 wheelers in australia I meant to look that up fuck freda a a crater because it's a lorry in britain my dad drives a drives a truck for a living called a bobtail and he no the bobtail is a smaller truck because he also he drives an 18 wheeler and a bobtail but the 18 wheeler my whole life he's always called a transport but I look. That's also called in Australia. They call they call them transports in Canada. So in the why don't United you just States Google already? Because I wanted to say my thing. Uh, okay. Well, road, road trains. trains. Road oh, that's trains. cute. That's nice. That makes sense. Yeah, because in America, depending on where you are, they call it a semi, uh, a long haul truck. Or an 18 wheeler. But I've never seen, I've never seen two loads. Uh, do they have different regulations in Australia? They can just keep tacking on. a little bigger down under. Is it bigger? Is that not Texas? No. Okay. Everything's just upside down, down under. Um, okay. So, so Mad Max's thing is we don't know his thing, right? We just know he's driving away from his problems. Mm -hmm. He doesn't stay anywhere long. 
He's just driving for some fucking reason. He's okay. just subsisting. And what he needs is he needs gas and he needs food. So wherever he can get it, he'll get it. Got it. But uh, he he's, you know, scouting this truck and he finds, well, first a dead body falls out and you jumped so high in the air. I just didn't know it was going to be a jump scare kind of movie. And it's not, but there is that and there's like one other Just one, one. other thing. Uh, in the dead man's hand is a wind up music box that plays Happy Birthday and it makes Max kind of smile. And on the commentary track, George Miller refers to this music box as a hurdy gurdy. <laughs> they keep saying that like that's a normal okay. thing people say. <laughs> Is the same with the, the hurdy gurdy man. Well, is that is the hurdy gurdy man the one that plays the crank box and the monkey dances? Let's is that say the yes. hurdy gurdy. So that makes sense. Max, that would be why he's called a hurdy gurdy man. Max stumbles upon a parked gyrocopter guarded by a snake. Here, let me be pedantic. Every time I've watched this movie, I'm like, that's a python. It's not fast and it's not going to bite you and and inject you with poison. But they act like it will that so, sure is pedantic yes um i will say that like these things were not clear as the movie was i mean there were a lot of moments where i'm like i don't know what the fuck is happening here or how this why is this leading to this hmm. it's fine but you've seen it so many times so all this is very obvious to you he uh max grabs the snake like he's gonna eat it but then out pops the gyro captain pops from up from the ground like a fremen from dune yes he does this is uh, Bruce Spence, the, the gyro captain, the great Bruce Spence, Australian legend, also been in a lot of Hollywood movies. There's nobody like who looks like him and who acts Those like him. teeth. He's in, you haven't seen the Matrix sequels. He's the train conductor from Matrix, uh, uh, the train. third one, Re- Reloaded. So he's like. Bruce Spence has got him has got him at at arrow point and he's like looks like I've got myself some guzzoline eh but then Max turns the table on him oh, you well like. no wait first my favorite line in the movie because because the gyro captain's like I'm gonna get some gasoline from your car and he's and Max just says booby trapped touch those tanks and <laughs> <laughs> like you're being kind of playful right now man who says nothing but I just love the way these people talk because later gyrocopter is like uh He's like, no, they're refining. Ka-chunk, 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 ka-chunk. <laughs> There's some more simplistic time. It, it takes energy and moisture to talk. So, you know, we'll get more out of just, let me just. And maybe there's like radium in the air or something that's making everybody's and brains work worse. So you just can't come up with words. Well, they're dehydrated. Lots of things go that's wrong true, when you're dehydrated. Yes. And they're un- they're malnourished. So uh, Mel Gibson's dog jumps out. The tables are turned. Yeah. Pumping it. They are refining. Ka-chunk, ka-chunk, ka-chunk. So if you kill me, you'll never find out where it is. I I do. I mean, I don't know if this is giving anything away, but I I always enjoy a scenario where it's a curmudgeon lead guy with a person insisting that they're a great team and that they're, um, oh, with you and me, mate, right? And that they just keep popping in, keep popping in. They're just um boy are we a great team that you hate me but eventually they wear him down you're so right i love that I love that. whenever it happens and yeah he multiple times he's like we're partners he's like no what are you talking? he never expressed any interest in being a partner of yours and yet you keep and he's coming only back. treated you like shit right but you like him you that matt you like this because that's how you make all your friends we just force it that's true we i would keep, never have any friends we just if keep popping up people like Lacey hadn't been like hey what you doing <laughs> no thing oh yeah Hang Talk around. about all that. Like a fungus you grow on me. Uh, that's my so, charm. I decided I'm going to try to not say I don't have friends as much. Any- yeah, because it's really mean to your friends. Because I have great yes, friends, you do including have great ones friends. who listen to the show. Jesus Christ. Yes, I know. I'm sorry. I have great friends. Okay, they go uh, to this refinery. Look, I love how simple this movie's plot is. There's an oil refinery. They're pumping the gas out of the, out of the ground. Good They're job. turning it into you know let it get whatever that you can put in a truck and use okay and refining it refining it, <laughs> you might say and they have to protect it as well so that's what they're doing and uh gyro cop gyro captain shows mad max this and they're just scoping it out from a distance also did not understand at all what i was looking at i thought that that all the vehicles that are that are running around and going to and from and to and from and then someone's yelling i thought all that was coming from the refinery i thought all of that was there with the the bad guys compound maybe we're supposed to be confused i don't know i had no idea that was the the same bad guys or the same 
ruffians that were messing with Mel also also they're just running around doing that to everybody trying it, to get resources from everybody it is un- it is unclear yeah it, okay good yeah it, and it, it it just occurs to me it's like how big of a freaking hassle is it to just have a big auspicious good thing in the middle of tons and tons of lacking of good things mm-hmm. like do you really want to be responsible for this i also like how like just flamboyantly they use the resource with the fucking flamethrower <laughs> just like all yeah. oh, the gas bitch yeah so yeah the oil refinery people there they have a wall it's a fortress they're protecting it with flamethrowers and stuff but surrounding it are lord humongous's people we don't know that yet, but we, we are supposed to, you are supposed to intuit these bad guys are trying to get in. And so they're just driving around and around and I don't know, eventually they'll find a way in, but here's what I love about this. Well, well and like bike riders will like jump over a ramp and land in the refinery and then they'll just get killed. <laughs> but here's what I love about this. This is, these are the beginnings of nation states. Like you could flash forward 300 years and now suddenly you have the nation of humongous and the nation of the refinery. Like this is how, like, right. You need how did England start? Right. It was just some fucking warrior chief. Who's like, I'm the king. I'm the king of Sussex. You need a pla- You need a place with resources. And then you need to be the person that stays there the longest. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's why everything's built along a water source or in this case, this, but they never explain where they get their water and they never drink any. No, no one even drinks any alcohol. This is a gas movie, not a water movie. <laughs> Ma- uh, from, a gas and dog food movie from his perspective max viewing this from far away and then later in the gyrocopter <laughs> he thinks he's above it he thinks i'm not a part of this i'm separate from all of this but no you are a part of it okay uh and from this perspective on the hill uh they really do like uh uh the the refinery people eventually send out their like scout troops and cars and you just see just paths of cars chasing each other and it just looks like ants coming out of an anthill so I don't see it that way. You need to watch it. I am looking at it right now. They don't. No, look you ants. need to see them in motion. Um, yeah, I have in my notes. You really have to pay attention to this part, or else it probably won't make sense. And then there is a woman who the bad guys rape and kill. It is very upsetting. It would not be in a movie today. I think that it was too much. It is too much. Uh, uh, I think that after watching that exploitation documentary, they're like, "But that's just what you need in your movie." No. I mean, the movie does treat this as being very upsetting. Yeah, but the guy but, that's with her is not upset enough, and and she gets no lines, but you get to see her tits. Yeah. Uh, when when the gyro captain watches it, like you can see the horror on his face. Again, I don't. George Miller would not put this in a movie today, but in at the time, I think they're like that's this is this is how you show how fucking gnarly it can get. Mm-hmm. So Max goes down in his car to get one of the kidnappees named Nathan and Nathan's like oh god bless you sir and he's like save it I'm just here for the gasoline <laughs> I, it's, it's so odd the because it bef- going by Mad Max's attire by what I've seen in in Fury Road what the the uh Lord Humongous crowd wears you would think all that is available is black leather um and then somehow maybe this refinery used to be by um like a Gap Kids Mm -hmm. or like an Ann Taylor Loft or something because they are all in fucking pastels in this that's how you know they're the good guys they're in light colors which is not really any more practical they're wearing too much but you just bring in what you have. Why do they all have, are they part of a cult? Were they part of some sort of commune? Why do they all have matching clothes? They're not matching. They all they look, all they all wear look very light mismatched. Clo- no, I'm not saying they have the exact same outfits on. I'm saying that they all wear the same colors. It's till, I know it's like red team, blue team. It's just easier to identify your people if you're always, it's also easy to disguise a bad guy if you've got a fucking co- out costume. Okay. They could just wear some khaki and get right in there. <sighs> yeah, anyway. I love, okay, so, okay, Lord Humongous, I don't know where, okay, by now Mad Max has gotten into their little area, right, and he's just talking about, here's my deal, I'll help you guys, or no, I don't want anything, I just want, I I had a contract with that man, he said I could have gasoline if I brought him back here, I've done that, and then the man dies, and they're like, well, got no contract, Mm -hmm. Um, and then at that time is when they, they chain him up so he doesn't get away. I'm not sure why. And Lord Hubungus' crowd is right back. They just left. And they're right back. Um, 
I believe they have captives. Yeah, strong, like strung to the, to the, to the, but like a hull of a ship um, to the front. And then one of them's like begging to stop to Jesus Christ, don't shoot Jesus. So one of them is begging for their life and telling them to listen to Lord Homungus and, and listen to him and then take him on up in his offer. The other one is a little more loyal and is saying, don't listen to him. Don't listen. So it's just, it's chaos fucking. Um, but Humongous is trying to get them to just walk away from the refinery. You can have safe passage. We don't want to kill you. We just want where you live. Get out of here. It's like Mr. Burns when the school finds oil and he's like, why should someone else in town have oil? I want the oil. (laughs) Like, why do you get this oil? I want to get that oil. But you know, that's what like property is. It's all kind of arbitrary. It's just, can you defend your claim to this thing? I'm going to test you. I'm going to put, I'm going to put your dedication to the test by hurling bodies at you until you give up and, and this surrender. This is why regular ass fucking people should not own guns. Like you can own the big dangerous thing. You can own the big powerful thing. But when the time comes to use it, are you the person to wield it? Is this really what you want to back up? Or is it going to be taken from you and used against you? You fucking morons. Never. Re- 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 this is obvious. Never occurred to me how few guns there are in this in Mad Max. If this were if this were the post-apocalyptic America, well, everyone would just be armed to the gills. Yeah, no, no, no. They wouldn't be. Because everyone's going to blow through their fucking bullets. That's why bullets are treated like so precious in this movie. The bullets that the bad guy has are in this like velvet fucking box and he be like preciously takes them out and uses them. And then Mel Gibson's got three or four bullets in the entire movie. Yeah. And he uses them very strategically. The lady like who is so happy he did something helpful to her she gives her him her precious couple of bullets like yeah no uh it, they are a precious commodity you just can't remake them you can't pump them from the ground yeah that's true once you use them they're spent lord humongous gets on his little megaphone says just walk away just walk away we will give you passage through the wasteland which of course he's lying but th- we don't know that he's lying i guess you don't know you that use, that's never been tested i really do think he would let them go hmm I mean, why kill them if they really are going to go? Well, it's the, um, I, can I mean, prove it's the it. central dilemma. Okay. I can prove it because at the end of the movie, the bus goes one way and the tanker truck full of oil. That's the decoy or gas goes the other way. And if their aim were to kill them, plus get the gas, they would have followed both, but no one ever follows the bus because they need the gas because Fine. they're after the gas. Fine. But if their goal was to both get the gas and kill off the people so that they're not an issue and they don't come back, then they would have done both. Mm-hmm. Or at least send one person to the bus. They don't send anybody. They just it, the bus just goes. Yeah, but it is kind of pris- prisoner's dilemma of like I don't know like he's saying he will give us safe passage. I don't know if I should believe him or sure. not, but I know that it's naive of me to think that that I'll be safe. Right, and, and the people that are in their little shit town um, are do seem torn on it. Boy, there are just a bunch of idiots in this fucking town. I, I, I've never met... Uh, I mean, we've definitely seen some like post-apocalyptic shows and movies, and there's always an episode or a moment where there's a town like this and like mm-hmm. people are usually shown as like capable they've all got a skill they've all got like a role but there's just a bunch of fucking morons in this goddamn place w- that are screaming all the time and and then like some that are like way too cool for school have makeup have their hair done all the time which doesn't fucking make sense then someone who's f- straight out of the mall who's just a valley girl mm-hmm. where the fuck did she come from and then and I- I- Maybe this is more realistic. I don't know. They, like this, Just because you find yourself together doesn't mean that you each know a skill. You just could be a whole bunch of useless people and some people who kind of know what they're doing. Another interesting thing about this ragtag group, there's not one person in the mix that I would trust with my life. Maybe that woman, maybe, but that man that's running things, he's, he's bullshit. He's so nothing. He's so unimpressive. You're talking about Papa Gallo? I just, there's just nothing to him. He doesn't convince me of anything. He's a, a little bit of a prick when it comes to w- the way he talks to Mad Max. Uh, he wants a lot from him, but he's like not offering much. He's, his he's whole manipulative. Deal, well, but his whole deal is like, everybody has been about surviving day to day. And I'm saying the only way we can start rebuilding what we used to have is via this gasoline and we have to work together uh and collectively we will we can do it but it's going to take a lot of sacrifice and it's going to mean everybody needs to buy in and and uh he's a cult leader 
but he's a, he's got you can say no, he's a cult leader, but like that is actually what you'd have to do. I know, but he's got no evidence that there's anywhere better than where he already is. He's just got his little fucking wish you were here fucking pain. I guess he does need water. They need water. Yeah. There's no there's no way around that. They don't ever talk about it, but it's clearly lacking. You're in the middle of the desert. And and if you know anything from the before times, which you must, because you're older than Mel Gibson, who knows lingerie, then you must remember that there are other places. How did you end up here? <laughs> Why are you here? But even if you were here and you just were going to stay here permanently, you need you'd still need buy-in from everybody. Yeah. But uh, most people seem like they want to stay. Mm-hmm. It's his idea to leave. Um, I like that Lord Humongous, when he, you know, he says, you know, just walk away. We he, So he says... Because they'd sent out their scouts. And he's like, I'm gravely disappointed. Once again, you've made me unleash my dogs of war. Like, you've made me Mm -hmm. kidnap your people and kill them. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. Wait, but uh, so, because we don't know why they were sent out, but they need stuff. They're looking for a truck. Oh, well, like, okay, if if your deal is I won't kill any of your people if they don't come out ever. Well, how are they going to eat or drink? So, like, just us sending people outside of our walls is what makes you kill them. Yes, and but he's yeah. they, but this is this is what shitty people do. They're yeah. like, hey, 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 I don't, I don't want to hurt anybody. Uh, you, you made me do it, and mm-hmm. and he says, look, we're all guilty. All of us are guilty. Bad things have been done by both sides. I want an end to all this madness. Just walk away. Just give me what you have, and we'll be all be good. When you oppress a people, and then they fight back, you're like. I have to uh, escalate my actions, but it's because of what you made me do. But they're only doing, they're only uh, doing what they did in response to your oppression. Like resistance, it gives them the the, the green light to go ahead and be more extreme. Right. And that's what Lord Humongous here is doing. I just think it's well observed uh, without hitting you over the head. Mm-hmm. Look at this stupid kid. Oh God, this is this dumb picture. <laughs> I mean, it's not. There's something so sweet about this kid. I'm sorry. I'm responding to something the audience can't see. Um, All right. So I did not understand. All right. So Lord uh, Mungus's crew attacks and Max shows that he's useful in a fight, which they probably should have already realized that. But um, I think he helps them get rid of that wave of people. I don't totally remember. Um but they make some kind of oh I know he wants he wants gasoline and they won't give it to him so he so he realizes they have a need and that he has he has the thing they need which is um, a transport for their tank tanker tra- tanker of gasoline um, and he'll exchange that for him taking all the gasoline he can carry because um, Lord Humongous said we'll be back in twenty four hours you think about hours. my proposal right in the meantime Max is like I saw a truck. At the beginning of this movie, that's what he said. You can use that truck to haul your tank. Uh, I don't want any part of this. I just want your gasoline. Is that a good contract? Because he, he, the whole reason he even stopped in this place was like, you have a thing. If I don't get the thing, I've now wasted my fucking time. I just need the thing. Uh, there's not going to be another Phillips station for like miles. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Um, and this, and in the fight scene that precedes this, we see the quote unquote feral child and his fucking crazy ass skills um, with his his deadly. Uh, boomerang it that is so sharp that it it de- almost decapitated a person and it chopped off fingers of another person and he has a special glove for catching it and when i first see what this kid does which he's, he has a he has a tunnel that he's built from inside where he's safe to to out of the out of the property probably has a bunch of tunnels but he used that to sneak up like just jump right into the action of where the outsiders were. And I'm thinking, why isn't the mom stopping this little boy? It did not occur to me that he's feral because he found them. He he came this way. Mm-hmm. This boy has no mother. They're taking care of him in, in a way that they that he'll let him, but he's mostly just self-sufficient. Mm-hmm. And like no one's gonna tell him he can't go in his little tunnel. He's gonna go in his fucking tunnel. And he is stealth as hell and capable as hell. Oh, which is another part we didn't talk about. And there's something so upsetting to me. And it it's it, it, it not, it pulls on that same sensitive nerve I have about Lord of the Flies and that one episode of South Park. And, I, and it, there's nothing to do with child danger here. But this is a big group of ruffians, the Lord Humongous people, 
who have all decided we're all going to be shits together. Yeah, but we're shits together. We love each other, though, right? We're going to look out for each other. We're, and I'm going to I'm going to terrorize people for you, Lord Humongous. And I'm, I'm going to be your sex slave if you want it. Whenever we walk up on some people, I'm going to like I'm going to be your town crier and be like, here he is. You guys are fucked. He's the best. I'm going to be that guy. And that guy reaches his hand up to catch the boomerang and and all of his fingertips get chopped off and everyone in his crew laughs at him Mm -hmm. like you are so expendable this is the kind of humor we have you getting injured to a point that's probably going to make it to where you die soon because you need your hands in this world like you're only as good as what you can do for us you're fucked now and we're all laughing at you while you slowly lose your use and then your life like it's and it's such a fucked i don't i don't know it, it bothered me so bad and then and then the guy kind of immediately realizes like well you got to go along to fit in so he's like ha, 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 yep. Ha, ha. yep oh there's something so fucking dark about that but it's a dark movie these are dark I, people i know but in a dark movie that was a dark ass moment of like you are so useless you little cheerleader it's funny what you just what you think is the darkest stuff that oh. to happen in movies like yeah, i could tell that that bothered you after i saw it but it's just funny i can't predict these things ahead of time that of all the things that happen in this movie this will be the thing that upsets Lacey mo the most is when they laugh at that guy and, and like so the kid stuff was never going to bother me in this movie because this isn't your average kid this kid is like a super per- i mean he jumps in the air and does like fl- they this movie has him do cartoonishly un Poss- impossible human things um a couple times so mm-hmm. it's like this kid's fine and yeah. it, it but but his relationship to Mad Max is really fucking cute and and, and, and like heartwarming and like this kid was clearly looking for something mm-hmm. and he and he found it in this man in a way that he didn't find it in these other people that he found for the time being and I don't blame him. There's not one fucking drip I'd fucking hang with in this group. Oh my god, I hate the good guys in this movie. Yeah, but yeah, he he's he except for Gyro, who I like. He is so, but he's not from that the refinery. I know, yeah. but he's a good guy in this movie. Yes, uh, but Feral Child, obviously, something so bad and traumatizing happened to him that when he sees Mad Max, he's like, point, like he, he, he this guy gets it. Neither of them articulates anything, but they do feel a connection to each other. Yeah. This could be so sappy so schmaltzy and it said it works so well for me max sees him and just starts playing the music the hurdy-gurdy yeah. and the kid loves it so if just to be clear this kid never speaks english this kid only grunts and and stuff and howls. he's very feral uh, you'd say he's dressed like a caveman which is so fucking stupid no one else has fur and was he wearing, wearing kangaroo i don't like where'd you get these pelts man so uh we get the first great truck chase max with the aid of the feral child making wolf noises is able to sneak past the humongous gang and he finds the gyro captain once again who is wandering around and he's like he helped me carry the guzzoline back to your copter and they get into the copter and they fly back to the trucks max leaves gyro behind but gyro follows him in the air uh and the max hauls ass back to the refinery past all lord humongous's troops they chase him uh, I, I recently reread uh, The Old Man in the Sea by Ernest Hemingway. Totally. Yeah. And, uh, Me too. And that is a very short book that's like an allegory for for life and how life is hard and sucks. But yeah. the guy catches a giant fish that he can't fit into the boat, so he has to basically strap it to the side of the boat. By the time <laughs> he gets back to the shore, the, the fish has been like eaten apart by sharks. Mm. And it's like you get one good thing in the world, and suddenly everyone comes for it. Everyone wants a piece. Everyone's going to try to fight you for it. Right. And you just have to keep going. Uh, and that's what's happening here. He found this great truck and they're like, oh, give me that truck. I want that truck. We didn't want the truck before, but now you got the truck working. And we really like that there Ooh, truck. You, that, that, that's smart dumbass. He realized like, you could use that truck to haul the thing. You quit being the campiest lost boys that l- laugh at horrible human tragedy and spend some time learning a trade. Like you too could have a mechanic. You too could learn. Someone could learn how to do a thing. That way when you find products around the your world, you can make them work again and like quit taking things from people and learn to make them. They're thirsty and the air is toxic. Their brains aren't working. They're just like, Fine. this pink looks pretty sharp. Maybe this, this spike. Looks, this pink looks pretty sharp. Someone put on pink. Another one has a spike. So 
yeah, Max goes back to the camp with the truck and they're like, oh, Mad Max, we love you. You can be such an important player for us. And he's like, fuck no, I'm Gross. leaving. It's a pleasure doing business with you, but I'm leaving. We had a jail. Uh, but Lord Humongous comes back. He has more hostages. He basically does some silent movie acting. He's just flailing around as they have some ADR and he's just monologuing about, <laughs> about them. Max casually eats dog food with a fork and watches as all of this happens. And then Papa Gallo. Second time he did that comes and tries to persuade him to drive the tanker and then i realize oh it's casablanca he is papa gallo is vic is victor laszlo mm. just like victor laszlo he's a boring character True. but he's like we all have a destiny whether it's for good or bad but you have to realize you're part of the world we're all connected to each other you can't just be above it fascism affects you man the nazis affect you and he's like i stick my neck out for nobody see mm. but they're like no no no. you gotta you right. gotta help us and again he says no and then Papa Gallo says, you think we haven't suffered. We've all suffered. We've all been through the worst shit in the world, but that's the only way we can ever make good things happen is by moving forward. Right. It's, you know, it's the same thing with, with politics in the world. You're probably going to lose, but if you don't try some, you're just surrendering and someone else. Right. Not is, taking a stance is taking a stance. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So, and I guess the gyro captain would be, would be Louis Reynolds. Okay, great. So I needed everyone to fit in on your little analogy. So, yeah. Uh, oh, oh, so the contract over. He brought back the truck. They'll give him all the guzzling he can carry. So mm -hmm. he loads it up in his car, uh, zooms past Lord Humongous. Lord Humongous says, you disobey me, you puppy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but Wes tracks him down, makes him crash his car. Then he shoots Max's dog. And they're about to shoot Max too, but the booby trap in his car goes off and it explodes. And then I guess Wes just assumes Max is dead, so he leaves him behind. No. But the gyro captain comes back oh, and picks sorry. him up. Oh, sorry. Wes. I don't know who Wes is. Oh, the, the bad guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, gyro captain comes back and picks him up because they're partners. Remember, they love each other so much. Mutual reciprocal love. Brings him back to the, to the camp where they're all now going to be leaving in the tanker truck, Papa Gallo will drive it. Everyone splits up. All the civilians, you get in the bus and go that way. We'll go this way. We know they're going to chase us. They'll give you a clean break. But Max, who's horribly injured and bruised and limping and his eye, one of his eyes doesn't work good. He's like, if it's all the same to you, I'll drive that tanker. But he thinks he's driving gas. Yeah, they don't tell him. They don't that. tell him. That's smart. So they, they. They let him do it. Just like Rick from Casablanca. He's like, I will help you. I will. And I think that I think that while he's like recovering, the feral child comes and visits him. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, it's that connection in addition to being forced by circumstance to make him feel like I need to help these people. Well, and he's like an eye for an eye kind of person. And he was just rescued from what he knew would have been him dying. So he's like, let me repay them. And I kind. need to repay you. Yeah. yeah. So they take off and the feral child jumps into the truck with Max, which he didn't want. Uh, and what follows is just 15 minutes of some of the greatest action cinema ever. Cinematic euphoria. It's like a Buster Keaton movie. It rules. It's great. Mad Max Fury Road 34 years later is like a two hour version of the last 15 minutes of this movie. Yeah. So, I mean, me just describing it would be boring, but man, maybe the whole podcast is boring. Uh, but there, but you know, um, action maybe. is action is the purest form of cinema, I say. Uh, this is the height of what it can do. It can tell a story without words. There's an arc to it. There's cause and effect to every little thing. There's character moments. There's set up payoff. Uh, like Wes jumps on the back of the truck and hits Max with a mace. So Max's bullets fall forward onto the dash. And then the feral child jumps on one of the bad guys. Papa Gallo comes, pulls up to get the kid to jump to him. The kid doesn't. And then as a result, Papa Gallo gets killed. Uh, and then Max gets the feral child to come back and he's like, I need you to get those bullets up there on the dash. And I just love this moment in the movie. And the kid, the kid actor is so good with the faces he's making mm -hmm. as like, uh, as Max is like bullets up there, get the bullets for me. And you can see the kid trying to understand what he needs to do and to get up the courage to do it. Maybe and then he, he does understands, it. but it is the first time he is not trusting Max. Like it, you know, he doesn't totally buy in. He's going to do it because he wants to please Max. There's something about him that feels safe with him and wants to get Max to let him stay on board. But 
I don't know. That's the first time I was like, okay, Max, I don't know where your heart is on this one. You're going to really risk this little boy, this one human you've kind of connected to ever since your little boy died. You're being a little fucking dangerous. Mm, see, I read, it as, I read it as him not as working hard to try to understand what he needs to no, do. I thought it was. That's not it. I thought, well, I'd say no, it you're is. wrong. I mm. thought it was like a, when baby Groot in Guardians of the Galaxy 2, they give him a little mission to save them all at the end. You think that this boy doesn't understand what bullets are and that his gun is empty and that he is pointing at bullets? I think that might be a little hard for him to process. You yes. don't think he knows bullets? He, I'm sure he knows bullets. I don't think he knows the, the words Max is telling him and to interpret the, that as instructions. I think you're wrong. Okay. Okay. We can agree to disagree. I think you're wrong about that too. Yeah. I just love that this something is something as ridiculous as this can like make me at least feel emotional about all of this. Wes pops back up. Max yanks the kid back. Max crashes, crashes his truck straight into Lord Humongous's car, which explodes. The truck overturns, but Max and the kid are okay. Then the gyro cop, the gyro captain shows up. They kind of smile at each other and Max realizes it was sand all along, but then he just has to smile like this tricky sons of bitches uh because they had smuggled the gasoline into the bus into barrels on Which the would bus have burst into flames killing everyone had anyone touched them if they'd at hit all. a pothole or something yes yeah and that's that's the movie i mean okay. the, the, the the narration comes back oh, i never saw the road warrior again but then they reveal the the narrator is the feral child who grew up so I think he could understand concepts like bullet go into gun mad he's he's an eloquent man now he learned Okay. He you was don't, uncivilized. You don't, fine. You don't grow into um into learn being a speaking person that drastically. If you work you real don't. hard. I mean, there's you stories can. about feral kids and how language challenged they are. If you if you never heard a human voice for the first seven years of your life or whatever. We don't know how long he was feral. No, we don't. Um yeah, the road warrior that was the last we ever saw of him, he lives now only in my memories. Jesus Christ. The end. This movie's 90 minutes long. It goes so fast. Packs so much in. Lacey's mid on it. Uh, I'm mid. You were mid on Abigail. I don't get what you don't get. Action connector. 